come along. There's been legislation which has not helped business at all, race-based legislation, and we have continued threats of uh, the, the removal of property rights um, in South Africa. And right now, that's the hottest topic. What's your views on those kind of policies and the road that South Africa is on? This is pretty much shooting yourself in the foot. It is pretty much shooting yourself in the foot. You know, it's very sad. It's very sad. This is so sad because we it happens all the time. I truly believe that Nelson Mandela had the best of intentions. Uh, for the longest time, I was, I was, for me, I figured that South Africa is where it is today because of, you know, Mandela eventually taking over and knowing that those guys were pretty much commies, you know, they were self-proclaimed commies. Um, to me, uh, not looking at it deeper, I thought to myself, okay, he probably brought his commie ways to South Africa. And of course, fast forward today, <laughs> we are, they are where they are. They, they probably be put in place all the, wrong, the worst policies they could put in place that would be killing businesses, stifling industry, you know, killing industrialization, making it go backwards. Um, meanwhile, incentivizing people uh, to basically not be productive members of society. And what I mean by that is all of these race-based, you know, um, policies that supposedly were designed to kind of correct, um, you know, whatever, um, you know, harm or, or whatever, um, you know, um, inequality was done before. I, I, I understand where that sentiment could come from. It's only later that I understood that actually, despite being a commie, <laughs> Mandela said, oh, well, we're, we're not going to touch the free markets when he came to power. I mean, I discovered that actually quite, you know, maybe five, six years ago, thanks actually to a South African, Fumlani. He's a great guy. If you haven't had him on his show yet, you should, probably should. He's amazing. Oh, great. Fumlani so Majorzi, yeah. Yeah, he's well, amazing. He's the one who opened my eyes to this. But anyway, um, even beyond that, so so this is very sad because... I um, I think, look, it's very simple. If you want prosperity, prosperity is built by entrepreneurs. What do entrepreneurs need? They need an enabling business environment. You touch that, you screw everything up. Property rights, sh uh, secure and transferable property rights is part of it. Rule of law is part of it. Um, all types of policies that um, stand in the way of people um, developing the virtue and character that's needed in order to thrive in a good business environment is also part of it. And what I see is that South Africa uh, from ANC days, especially past, you know, Mandela, you know, like you were saying, when Zuma came in place, that's when all of it started to become worse and worse and worse. Right. And the absolute thing you for so for any South African today, I don't care what skin color you are. I don't care what skin color you are. If you are South African and you want something good for your country, you want prosperity and everything that prosperity brings and, and the prosperity that trickles all the way to you, to you, you are going to have to protect the concept of property rights. Because let me walk you then through you putting yourself into the other person's shoes. It's very easy to look at the world only from your side. But you have to understand how the world works so you, you can see how what you're pushing for is going to come straight back to bite you in the ass. You, who just promoted it. You're going to say no more pro property rights. I told you that. I'm going to, I'm going to take... Okay. So imagine... Um, imagine, Mike, you are a business owner, you're owning properties right now. You're, you're building, you know, you have built a business and all of that good stuff. Uh, you, have a, you, you have a company, you're hiring a bunch of people. Um, maybe you have a farm, a farm, a, a wine farm business. You know, you're, you're making wine, you're making all of that stuff. You have an Airbnb, you have a, a, a bread and breakfast on it, a hotel. It's you're employing hundreds of people, right? And putting money back into your country. Me, Magat Wade, I'm one of these people that maybe I live in poverty. Ideally, I would love to have a job. And I, so I would love to have a job. And somebody's telling me that they're going to come to you. They're going to take your wine farm. They're going to take everything. And, and they're going to spread it among others like me. And I'm like, yay, because I don't understand how the world works. But now let me help you understand how the world works. You took that from Mike. Let's say the whole thing is worth, 
I'm just gonna give easy numbers. Maybe the whole thing is worth $10,000. And maybe there is five of you that I have to share this among. So each one of you gets $2,000. You get that $2,000, um, each of you. Somebody, one, one person might very, you know, we see this all the time, even with, among our own family members. Again, doesn't matter which kind of color you are. You give an inheritance to all of your kids, and one of them is going to go and take it to, you know, girls, drinks, who knows what else. <laughs> and in Senegal, maybe you'll go marry a fourth wife. You know, that's what, how you use the money. But nothing productive with it, right? Then it's spent. You have nothing to show for. Um, somebody else is going to... So everybody's going to start to do different things. Somebody might even want to, bu to build a business, and say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna build something, or I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna buy a, ho a home, and you know, I'm gonna invest. But all of a sudden, you're thinking to yourself, but, but wait, do I really want to invest? Do I? Because uh, didn't they tell me that it's gonna be taken away from me? Um, property rights doesn't exist. I own nothing. Do I really want to invest in that? So exactly, what do you do in that situation? So, and if you do the same, somebody else does the same. Where exactly do you think more jobs are going to come from? If everybody's like tying their own hands because they're like, I can't risk this because this is not safe. I am not guaranteed the right to my property. That's all that property rights means. And you do that. Next guy door does that. The other lady does that. Nobody's building businesses. Nobody's investing in anything in the country. Where exactly do you think, you know, the jobs are going to come from and the income that they could create? So pretty much now everybody is looking around. There's nothing going on. And then if you think that, um, but, and then even the money that supposedly the government was going to give to you for free is not coming because no one is setting anything up. No one. So all of a sudden, that's how you watch yourself. The whole thing decaying. The whole thing is going down. So people have to think. People have to think. We cannot be lazy thinkers. A lazy thinker is to think about something all the way to where it pleases you. And then you're like, okay, voila. See, we told you it's going to work. No, it's not going to work. This is going to come straight back to bite you in the behind. And by the way, guess what, guys? Those of you who don't have an escape plan, those of you who can't leave South Africa, are going to be the ones who are going to have to who are going to have to suffer the most because everyone else who can is fleeing right now. Do you know how many people are trying to come to the U.S. to Canada and everything? And who are these people? The ones who are interested in building something. The ones who actually want it because they're the ones who are ready to build the jobs. Those jobs provide an income. With that income, you can buy yourself a home. You can buy yourself a car. You can take your kids to a nice, to a good school so they can have a better life. You have a better life. They create new products that are going to make your life easier. When you go to a dentist to get whatever, you know, tooth, um, treatment done it's it's less pain because somebody has developed you know a technology that you know makes root canal much easier where you don't sense anything that's what entrepreneurs do to society that's what they do so anyone who tells you that they're just their suckers that's not what it is um so so when people think this way i would encourage south africans to really really bring their minds back together and understand that um what you're going after, what the EFF is going after. I wish they called themselves a different name, by the way, because this, calling yourself economic freedom fighter, you're not fighting for economic freedom. Maybe you want ec financial freedom, but economic freedom is not what you're fighting for. Because economic, What your country needs is economic freedom. What you're promoting is the opposite of economic freedom. So you see, even there, the, um, the what's the word for it? Really, the, um, how they just don't understand uh, the world is mind boggling. And so I would just really recommend to everybody to stop thinking uh, when something is too good to be true, it usually is. And having everything free is not good. Everyone in your own families, think about it. Think about it in your own families. The people that think we all have these people in our families, somebody who we all give to, we give, we give. They always come back and they want more. We, and us, we give, we give. These are usually the members of our families that all of us know it's not getting anywhere. This person is doing nothing. And we also know probably that, we, that maybe the best to do would be to cut, to cut the, 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 the free stuff to this person. They need to get off their butt and go do something. We all sit in our own families. So this whole free everything, 
at the government level is no, nothing different from what we're all seeing in our families. This person who always comes, I need more, I need more. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. We all know. So if you want to know where this is going to lead, look in your own families. Look to your own friends who always come to you for something free. Do, they, do you see them actually getting up and doing something? No, you don't see them. But this is what happens. That is, this is, this is a, the, 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 the it's, it's, a, it's, very, it's very sad because you're giving welfare supposedly to help. I understand this feeling, where it's coming from. But the problem is the unintended consequence. Whether we like it or not, it's there. The more you give to your friend, that friend that always comes back for free, or to that family member that always comes back, you see what happens. They become more lazy. They tend to not, they don't want to do anything and they keep on waiting for you and it's a never ending game. It is the same thing, nothing, nothing different here. Well, Magat, you started off by telling